what are some of the common mistakes that parents do you know because parents wants to their babies to start crawling and walking as fast as possible right we as pediatric physios don't really want them to it's not about walking early it's about we tend to see a lot of parents trying to you know put hi guys thank you so much for watching us today a quick message you might be watching this but have not yet hit the subscribe button below it will mean so much to me to all of us if you subscribe the more the people watch us the greater the guests that we'll have on this channel to inspire us with their stories and experiences thank you so much and now let's dive in good morning good morning please tell us your name and where we are and what do you do fun uh, so my name is Emanuela we're at my pediatric physiotherapy in Limassol and we see kids that need uh, help with their movement and coordination and balance how did you end up here as a phys physiotherapist um, working with kids was something I always wanted to do um, growing up I had a friend whose mother was a pediatric physiotherapist so I, I learned about this area very early early days so um, I think I was, I, I always knew I wanted to end up working with kids uh, in a physiotherapy kind of environment. Apart from being a physiotherapist, dear, working with kids on a day-to-day -day basis, what else do you do? So um, I have been teaching pediatric physiotherapy for the last 12 years at the University in Cyprus. So now I get not only to work with kids, but to actually help other people and teach them how to work with kids as well. Do you enjoy teaching? I love teaching. Oh, okay. I love teaching. It's actually, I think one completes the other. Who are some of your clients? So we do tend to have a lot of cerebral palsy, kids with cerebral palsy. We work with um, oncology cases, mostly brain cancer. Uh, we do get to see a lot of syndromes. At the same time, we have easier cases, let's call them, that there are um, simple musculoskeletal cases like scoliosis or club feet or um, torticollis. So we get to see all ages and a variety of uh, severity, let's say. So from simple cases to, I guess, the hardest uh, would be brain cancer. Some of these conditions cannot be treated completely. I mean, medically at least. Mm -hmm. Do you teach parents how to handle these children when they go home? Yes. And what are these conditions, if you can mention them? Well, um, I guess it's even more important to teach the parents what to do at home than the actual bit we do here. Because if you think that we have kids once or twice a week, and that's a few hours per week, and they need to get treatment or exercise or... Um, maybe some stretching throughout the week. So it's important to teach the, the parents how to work with their kids. And then when the kids are older, it's important to teach these older kids um, how to take care of themselves. So for example, if we have a cerebral palsy, that's a lifelong condition. Um, we need to educate the, the family and the patient on how to continue for the future. A few weeks ago, we interviewed an orthopedic mm -hmm. about uh, club foot. Right. You also say that you work with children with club feet. What are some of the exercises that you, you know, help these kids to do so that their, their feet can be okay? And uh, what also can parents do at home? So um, club feet is actually a very common uh, pathology we get to see at the pediatric physiotherapy. Um, it's actually as common as one in a thousand kids, I think. Um, it's uh, important to follow the protocol. The protocol starts with the Ponseti treatment, which are the gyps that we put the feet in. Um, so, some kids might need surgery as well on top of that. Um, it's important to wear the special shoes on the bar and kids are supposed to wear them for a few months in the daytime and then for a few years in the nighttime. Um, and to top things up, it's very important to follow a, a good physiotherapy program to stretch the Achilles tendon, which most of the cases causes the club feet um, deformity because it's very short. 
So we need to strength, stretch and then strengthen um, these muscles around the foot and uh, below the knee, let's say, um, to make sure the, the feet go get the full range of motion and make sure that kids will uh, have a, a normal gait uh, pattern when they're a bit older. Are there some things that parents can do? Yes, of course. We teach, um, educate again parents how to massage and stretch the, the feet of their babies. And then when they're a bit older, how to put weight through them and strengthen them so they start um, weight bearing at, at a normal angle and a, a correct position. What are some of the rare conditions that you've dealt with? And when you see kids with these conditions, how do you feel? Right. Tricky question. So um, I guess I would think maybe muscular dystrophies are a very rare portion of pathologies we get to see. And also it's very tricky to answer how I feel because on one side I know I could help these kids up to a point. Um, definitely with their circulation, with their stretching, with their breathing, with their pain management. But then at the same time you can see them progress and you know they're gonna start getting worse whatever you do so it's um, it's 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 tough being a being a pediatric physio sometimes and it's even tougher when you're a mom because sometimes it's very hard to dissociate yourself from the job and the motherhood but uh, um, with a you know positive mind we just try and give as much as we can to these kids and we actually take a lot from them as well and it's, uh, we make a good team. What are some of the common mistakes that parents do? You know, because parents want to, their babies to start crawling and walking as fast as possible. Right. And we as pediatric physios don't really want them to walk as fast. We mm -hmm. want them to crawl more and then walk. So right. it's not about walking early, it's about walking correctly. Uh, we, do, we tend to see a lot of parents trying to, you know, put babies in walkers. We are completely against walkers as physiotherapists. Uh, we tend to see, you know, parents holding their kids, by, their kids by their hands, pulling them up to start walking from a very early age. We definitely don't want to put weight bearing on their feet before um, the eighth month. So, um, best advice I would give would be to, you know, wait for as long as they want. Make them crawl. Try to help them crawl. Try to help them weight bear and move their weight correctly and you know if they are 13 or 14 months old when they start walking even better because they have a better thinking process they have a better balance by that age so it's definitely better to wait a bit and give them freedom to crawl so when one of these fine days i was scrolling in, in the internet and i saw an advertisement right. saying that they can help your baby to crawl by three months and start walking by eight months. Right. What is the worst thing that could happen to such a baby? Well, we do have what we call developmental milestones. Right. And these milestones talk about how the brain develops and while the brain is developing, it helps the rest of the body reach these milestones. So if we're following that correct milestones order, let's say, by three months, we just want them to lie in their tummy and lift their head up. And that's the maximum we want them to do. Their bones are very soft, their body is not ready, their brain is not ready to start um, crawling at three months and definitely not walking by eight months. So in order for a, a, a development to go normally, we want them to follow each milestone and hit each milestone and enjoy each milestone. A reaching milestone shouldn't be a race. Right. It's a journey and we like that journey because kids develop and they get their stimulation from the environment and they get the sensory stimulation, they get the visual stimulation. So we don't want to deprive them from that because we want to help or make the, the movement faster. It's a, it's a variety of stuff they gain from all these milestones. With this, then I want to ask mm -hmm. about feeding as well. I mean, some kids have to eat early, but where is the best time for the kids to eat in terms of uh, their physical body? Right. Mm -hmm. So we strongly believe that once they start sitting up, right. maybe with a tiny bit of help, so that should be around six months or five and a half to six months, that's the right age to start feeding them as it's solids. 
and the reason being because the gastrointestinal system is actually more ready when the muscles are stronger around it. So to feed a child who is not able to sit at all is actually putting that child in danger of wow. choking, of not completely um, working on that food on the, on the way down as well. Wow, that is very interesting to know. So what you're trying to tell us is that physical development is also part of mental development. Absolutely, so, hands in hands. Wow. It's, a, it's a circle. It's a, it's, it's a, they're holding hands, they go together. Is there anything else that you would like to add? One of the most important things is that what we do here it requires a joint effort and a teamwork. So it's very important for us to have you know, a good working um, team with the parents and to actually do stuff at home as well. Because like I mentioned before, two hours per week is the bare minimum. And for some kids to see improvement, they need to be working daily. And you know, even like half an hour or an hour or a few hours, some kind of an exercise with the parents um, to actually see improvement. So it's, it's greatly important to work as a team with the parents and uh, put a joint effort. Thank you so much for your support so far. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you. Click the subscribe button below and let us grow together. Thank you. Ciao.